All right, good evening, folks. Adam Wason, Public Works Director for the City of Bloomington. I think it's just after 5.30 p.m. today on May 23rd, 2023. Uh, this is the regularly scheduled Board of Public Works meeting. Apologies for the minor delay. We had both uh, overflowing toilet issues and computer issues, so at least it wasn't just technology. <clears throat> um, but I will turn it over to Kyla Cox Deckard for this regularly scheduled meeting. I will call to order this regular meeting of the Board of Public Works this Tuesday, May 23rd of 2023. Uh, first up, we have messages from board members. Do we have any messages from the board this evening? Right. Seeing none. Uh, next up, we have appeals. Uh, first is appeal noise violation number 40524 for 437 East 16th Street. Thank you, board members. Alexandrina Pratt, Assistant City Attorney for the City of Bloomington. Can you hear me now? Yes. Great. Um, I just want to make sure that uh, Officer Dorman is on, on the line. No, that's, a, that's the appellant on the second. I don't have him. OK. Um, do you mind if I call him real quick? He said he'll be appearing via Zoom. Move on. He's for both appeals. Correct. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, then we'll move on to the next item and come back um, okay, sure. to Great. that. Uh, okay. We can go consent agenda and yeah. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Thanks. Uh, next up, we have petitions and remonstrances. This is an opportunity to make public comment on something that is not on the agenda this evening. Uh, if anyone has a public comment they would like to make on something not on the agenda. Uh, they are welcome to either um, approach the microphone here, or if you're on Zoom, you can use the um, raised hand or chat function to indicate that you would like to make a comment. Okay, seeing none. Uh, next up is consent agenda. Under the consent agenda this evening is approval of minutes for May 9th of 2023. Installation and maintenance agreement for unlighted signage in the near west side neighborhood. Uh, resolution 2023-23, Blue Ridge Food Truck Nights and Neighborhood Picnic. Noise permit for Mother Hubbard's Block Party. Resolution 2023-26, Declaration of Fleet Surplus. And approval of payroll. Do we have any items that need to be removed from the consent agenda this evening? Seeing none. Do we have any public comment on anything within the consent agenda this evening? Nothing on Zoom coming through. All right. Apologies, we're able to see the captions on the screen that's actually showing Zoom, but we're not able to see the closed captions in the larger screen right now for some reason. Oh, I see what you mean. We wanna make sure. Okay. okay close that. So, but we have no public comment on this item. Okay. Thank you. So the closed caption is working for the people who are in the Zoom yes. environment as well. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, do we have a motion on the consent agenda? I move that we approve tonight's consent agenda for May 23rd, 2023. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Lloyd? Aye. Cox Deckard, aye. Motion passes. Next up, we'll move on to new business. First under new business is noise permit request from City of Bloomington Utilities for conduit installation from Dunn to Indiana. This is for June 5th through June 30th. Hi, um, James Hall, CBU, um, Assistant Director of TND. Um, we are doing a utility locate for the Hidden River Stormwater Project um, in between Dunn and Indiana and Kirkwood and Sixth Street. Um, most of the project will take place in the parking lot. I use parking lot there on the south side. And um, as we get towards the end of the project, we'll go out into Indiana Avenue to, um, uh, to continue that project. Um, we are wanting to work um, from 6 p.m. at night till 6 a.m. in the morning to avoid some traffic, some conflicts with the some of the businesses there on Kirkwood and uh, the parking. And we're just 
we're not sure if we will hit rock, but we wanted to make sure that we got a noise permit for that in case we do. Um, we will be making noise as we break up the pavement and, and have large trucks in and out of there at nighttime. And I believe we, I think it said from the 5th to the 30th, we anticipate this project only taking two weeks um, if we don't run into any complications. And also we'd actually like to start the night of the 4th. So start at 6 p.m. on the 4th and carry that you know, into the 5th. Be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Questions on this item? Any public comment on this item? Thank you. Seeing none, is there a motion? Procedurally, can I call for a motion changing the date for the fourth? Okay. Yes, you can um, for the night before. And I move that we approve the noise permit request from the City of Bloomington Utilities for conduit installation from Dunn to Indiana starting 6 p.m. the night of June 4th through June 30th. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Lloyd? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. Next up is contract with ENB Paving LLC for the East Third and West Country Club Drive resurfacing project. Oh, good evening, Matt Smellis with the engineering department. Uh, this project will uh, mill and repave East 3rd Street from Eagleson Avenue to Overhill Drive and also 400 feet of West Country Club Drive from Walnut Street to the west. Uh, bids were opened yesterday with the city receiving two bids. The lowest bid was from EMB Paving in the amount of $946,815. Uh, construction will take place this summer. There will be single lane restrictions in place during construction and the project is funded through a community crossing matching grant and local funding. I can answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Questions on this item? No. All right. Any public comment on this item? Again, if you're on Zoom, you can use the chat function or the raised hand function to let us know. Seeing none, is there a motion? I move that we approve the contract with EMB Paving LLC for the East Third and West Country Club Drive resurfacing project. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Lloyd? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. Thanks. Do we have an update on the agenda item? Uh, we've not been able to reach the officer. If we don't, um, uh, by chance, get in touch with the officer by the end of the meeting, I'll just ask that you grant the appeals. These have been the holdover yeah. ones. So we'll, Thank you. Yep. Okay. Thanks. We'll get back to that item uh, momentarily. Uh, contract with Milestone Contractors LP for the Hopewell Phase 1 East Infrastructure Project. That's my list with engineering again. Um, this project is for the infrastructure construction on the block between 1st and 2nd Street and Rogers and Morton. Uh, bids were opened on May 3rd and the city received two bids uh, with milestones submitting the lowest bid at $13,373,284.90 and that amount includes all three of the alternates that were bid with the project. Uh, construction will start this summer. There will be single lane restrictions in place during construction. There will also be some closures, uh, but staff will come back to the board later when those dates are confirmed. Uh, the project is TIF funded and the RDC approved the funding last week at their meeting. Construction will start this summer and finish in October of 2024. You can answer any questions. Thank you. Questions on this item? Any public comment on this item? Seeing none, is there a motion? I move that we approve the contract with Milestone Contractors LP for the Hopewell Phase 1 East Infrastructure Project. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Lloyd? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. Thanks. Next, we have lane and sidewalk closure requests from Centerpoint on North Kinzer Pike. This is May 30th through July 28th. Good evening, Paul Kerber with Engineering. 
Uh, Miller Pipeline will be completing a gas main replacement project um, for Miller Pipe or for Center Point Energy along North Kinder Pike. Um, they're requesting temporary lane closures uh, while they complete the work. And the closures will be in place from May 30th through possibly July 28th. Um, their plan is to have everything substantially completed while the intersection is closed at Madison and 17th for the city project. Um, that project is May 30th through July 14th. And I've spoken with Dave Hudson and he confirms that they're gonna do everything possible to complete this project while the intersection is fully closed. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions on this item? Any public comment on this item? Okay, seeing none. Is there a motion? I move that we approve lane and sidewalk closure request from Center Point on North Kinzer Pike from May 30th to July 28th. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Lloyd? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. Next up is lane and sidewalk closure request from Gillette General Contractors on South Clariz Boulevard. That's May 29th through July 7th. Paul Kerber with Engineering. Uh, Gillette General Contractors is continuing their work on the Latimer Square project. Um, they'll be installing a protected bike lane and new sidewalks along the west side of Clariz. They'll also be doing new curb ramps along the east side. Uh, to complete the work, they're requesting to close, I guess, both southbound lanes and shift traffic. Uh, they'll put southbound in the, this will be the westernmost northbound lane of Clariz to keep two-way traffic. Um, and then the restrictions will be in place from May 29th through July 7th of 2023. And I did want to mention that this is all pending NDOT approval for the signal, if they have to adjust any timings or anything like that. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions on this item? No. So since it's pending NDOT approval, I sense that there's more information maybe. <laughs> I'm just curious. Go ahead and approach the microphone if you want, want to share some more information. I'm, I'm just curious about the in-dot approval and what that means for like our approval and if that's going to cause you any it is. delays. <laughs> so, so I'm hoping to maybe fix some of that tonight. And if you could just state your name for the record. Tom Rittman with Gillette General Contractors. And so the work that we're doing is both on Kingston and Clariz. So we're putting in, we originally were going to do the Clariz work first per our application and then move over to Kingston. We didn't understand that we were gonna to have to get a traffic signal approval through NDOT. So the time frame doesn't change, but we would like to start the Kingston work first mm -hmm. while we're trying to get this traffic signal thing worked out at Third Street. Um, there's, there's two traffic signals that are right there at Clariz that go out onto Third Street or the bypass and really all we need to do is cover one of those up. It's not, because we're changing the lanes to a two-way two -way road there. So um, I think it will be a pretty easy thing. We've been in contact with NDOT. We do not need any kind of a permit or bond from them, but they did put us in contact with their signalization department today. And we believe that we'll just have to cover one of the signals up temporarily while we're doing the work and then just uncover it once the work's done. Okay. So, so we didn't want to not get approved tonight since it's kind of a two-piece thing um, and we're hoping we could just shift our schedule to do the Kingston work first hmm. and then do then move over and do the Clarez work after that. So we'd essentially be switching the dates on items five and six on our agenda and the dates for Clarez move to Kins or move yeah. to Kingston and vice versa? Yeah, we would be doing Kingston on May the 30th through June the 30th, and then Clariz, there would be some overlap there, but the work at Kingston would be open already, so we'd already have the curb in and open Kingston back up. But our work on Clariz, we would want to start June 19th through 7, 28. 
Okay. Or, or it can just be approved you know, as a project and then we can't start the Clarez work until you know, we have that, to end up. That's what I was going to suggest is if we could possibly, I mean, they're, they're very much related and to just make one motion for the project to allow staff to coordinate the dates on the flips of each location. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, so, Tom, you said for Clariz, it's approximate June 19th through July 28th, and then for Kingston? It would be May 30th through June 30th. May 30th through June 30th. Yeah. I think we originally had Clariz starting May 30th, I believe. Okay. So I think you could um, make a motion combining the two with both sets of dates and use the word approximate. Mm -hmm. So that we then have the leeway to work with uh, Tom, uh, Gillette and Paul to get the switches done when he gets when they get the end up approvals. So combine them into one and do approximate dates from May 30th to July 28th. And there For, could be a stipulation that no work on Clariz until we have the end dot approvals. Okay, we'll get that into the record. You don't need to include that in the motion, but we'll make sure that's into the public record there. Yeah, because if, if something happens, like if tomorrow, if something miraculous happens, <laughs> let's, let's phrase this more dramatically. If something miraculous happens and tomorrow you find out from the state, yep, you're approved, whatever, you probably would prefer to do it the way you originally were planning on doing it because you've got all sorts of yes. things in place to do it that way, That's right? That's correct, yeah. So um, it, it does probably make sense for us to look at it as a whole project, knowing that each one is going to happen in a phase for the purpose of the maintenance of traffic plan, but those phases are ones that you can work with staff. Perfect. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay. So um, what we probably should do then is, I guess, bring forward the other item so that we can approve uh, both of them, if that's considered appropriate. Um, as one yeah, package. You would just describe the other one uh, with your staff report and then we'll, yes. I okay, think so um, just to make it official, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and call um, a motion to uh, amend the agenda to bring forward the lane closure request from Gillette General Contractors on South Kingston Drive, uh, originally scheduled June 26th through July 28th, to be considered in connection with the Clariz Boulevard project. Do we have a second on that? Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Um, public comment on this change to the agenda. Seeing none, uh, I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Lloyd? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Okay, that motion passes, so we'll go ahead and then bring forward the other part of this project, which is the Kingston Drive project, and hear that. All right, Paul Cover with engineering. Um, for the other part of the project, it's uh, Gillette General Contractors will be working on South Kingston Drive adjacent to their project, um, this is south of 3rd Street. They will not have any lane closures, they'll just be, um, I guess, narrowing the lanes. And they'll be constructing new curbs, sidewalk, and curb ramps, and on-street parking along the east side of South Kingston Drive. And again, these restrictions were originally going to be in place from June 26th through July 28th, 2023. Thank you. All right, questions on this project as a whole. Okay. I think we got them all answered with the last part of the conversation. <laughs> any, any public comment on this project? We have nothing on okay. here. Seeing none, is there a motion? I move that we approve lane and sidewalk closure requests from Gillette General Contractors on both South Clarice Boulevard and South Kingston Drive from the approximate dates of May 30th to July 28th. Second. All right. 
We have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Lloyd? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. Thanks. Thank you. Next up, we have lane and sidewalk closure request from Crown Castle on North Dunn Street, and this is for five days. Hi, this is Alex Gray from Engineering. Uh, Crown Castle Fiber is requesting a lane and sidewalk closure along North Dunn Street um, from 17th Street to the bypass. It'll be on the east side um, of North Dunn Street, and this is for directional boring for uh, fiber octa cable to go for their small cell infrastructure. Um, the work they plan on doing from May 30th to June 5th with no work being done on June 3rd or the 4th, which is the weekend. And they have been in com um, communication with IU and um, NDOT for the work that'll be in those kind of areas. Any um, questions on this item? Any public comment on this item? Yeah, on Zoom. Okay. Seeing none, is there a motion? I move that we approve lane and sidewalk closure requests from Crown Castle on North Dunn Street for five days. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Lloyd? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. Next up, we. Oh. Oh, pardon me. Um, we're going to, two things. First um, is we were going to ask that you go back to the appeals. Um, we're going to ask that you just grant the appeals and dismiss the noise um, violations. We have not been able to get a hold of the officer, and both of the appellants were on time crunches tonight, so mm -hmm. if we could dismiss those. Um, and then we'll come back to uh, Alex, if that's all right. Sure. Yeah, we can go back to that item. Uh, so um, the first item was appeal noise violation 40524 for 437 East 16th Street. Um, I'll go ahead and just call for public comment. There's anybody who wants to make public comment on that item. That was going to be the second thing. The only thing online, the reason we're so quick with our announcement that there's no public comment online is because it's just cats. Okay. The well, it's good to have cats. Services. It's good to have cats here. All right, so I don't see anybody in the room uh, wanting to make public comment. Uh, so seeing no public comment, uh, is there a motion on that item? So just to confirm, staff, we are upholding the appeal. Upholding, yeah, granting the appeal. Granting granting. The appeal. Yeah. Okay. I move that we grant the appeal for the noise violation number five, 40524 at 437 East 16th Street. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Lloyd? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. Next up is appeal noise violation number 40505 for 1002 East Maxwell Lane. Uh, do we have any public comment in the room uh, on this item? Okay, seeing none. Uh, is there a motion on this item? I move that we grant uh, the appeal for noise violation 40505 at 1002 East Maxwell Lane. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Lloyd? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. All right, next up, going to uh, item number eight is a lane and sidewalk closure request from Lineal Contracting on West 1st Street for May 26th through June 20th, 2023. Hi, it's Alex Gray from Engineering again. Uh, Lineal Contracting is requesting a moving lane closure along West 1st Street from South Rogers in the West 1st Street intersection to South College Avenue in the West 1st Street intersection with additional work near Fairview. Um, this work is for the West First Street Reconstruction Project and ahead of the Hopeful Project, they'll go in that area. And what they're doing is just moving their utilities as part of that project. Um, they are anticipating it to take 20 days total, so May 26th to June 20th. And I can put an additional uh, condition about May 29th uh, as no work. Okay. And they have, I have let them know that they should contact EMS as well. Thank you. Questions on this item? Okay. Any public comment on this item? Seeing none, is there a motion? 
I move that we approve the lane and sidewalk closure request from Lineal Contracting on West First Street from May 26 to June 20th, 2023. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Caron? Aye. Lloyd? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. Next up is permit extension request for Red Truck LLC for dumpster placement at East 6th Street. This is May 31st through June 17th. Hi, it's Alex Gray from Engineering. Uh, Red Truck um, LLC is working with Big Woods for the renovation of 402 and 406 East 6th Street. Uh, they are, their original permit um, was going to be ending May 31st and they have reached out to extend it to June 17th and their permit was allow for the dumpsters in front of those units. So there is no lane closure, there's no sidewalk closure. It is the closure of, I think it's four spots um, in front of those units and that's, they just wanna extend that to the 17th. That way they can finish their work. Any questions on this item? Just wondering if there's been any complaints about the work they've done so far or it's all been good? Okay. Yeah, there hasn't been any complaints. Great, thank you. Any public comment on this item? All right, seeing none, is there a motion? I move that we approve the permit extension request from Red Truck LLC for dumpster placement on East 6th Street from May 31st to June 17th. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Lloyd? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Next, we have right-of-way encroachment request from Rita's Italian Ice for a walk-up window. I thought I was gonna miss that. No, it's much Maria McCormick for engineering. Um, this is um, Rita's frozen ice and custard, Italian ice and custard um, is proposed to go into the falafel space in Dunkirk Square. They are requesting permission to use the public right-of-way um, to access their walk-up window along Dunn Street. I believe that we have, um, the petitioners are actually here tonight. Um, so they're just requesting to use the right-of-way. There are other items that are encroaching in the right-of-way where we will be asking for encroachment agreements for those items as well as anything that the board approves for their use of the right-of-way. Um, and we would plan to bring that back to you once construction is nearing, com is it st substantial completion? Um. Thank you. So we had extensive, uh, Adam Wason, Public Works Director, we had extensive conversation yesterday in the work session about this as uh, the board's aware and um, some of the, conver and would love to hear from the petitioners if we may, um, you know, some of the concern that we have with the walk-up window is queuing into the sidewalk there. So if you get real busy on an afternoon and there's blockage of the sidewalk, um, um, so we, <clears throat> you know, without having, uh, in ideal situations with the outdoor dining, you're gonna have a tree plot and then the sidewalk and then outdoor dining walk-up windows. Without, with this being a monolithic sidewalk to Dunn Street, um, can you talk about how you would try to keep any patrons from queuing up on the sidewalk, blocking the sidewalk? Um, our concern is the ADA standard, uh, Americans with Disability Act standard, would be a 54-inch free and clear path on a sidewalk. So if you could imagine a mobility challenged person using a, a wheelchair and ha allowing others to cross at the same time. Um, so could you just kind of speak to that and the footprint you're thinking about? My name is Steve Wilkos. I'm the owner of Rita's Ice. We have one location in Carmel um, and, and Fishers, and this would be our third. Um, thank you for uh, entertaining this. So our thought here is, uh, what brought us to this is that right in front of our window we have some space, but then it would go into grass, which is it is now, and then into the sidewalk. So our thought was that if we uh, petitioned to be able to uh, put, put cement there, concrete there, and make it one level surface, it would be better for our guests as they come up to the window. Um, we experienced similar to this in Carmel where we put in a walk-up window. We, we're the only ones in the entire town that have one. Um, and so we went for our variants there and uh, it's a little bit even tighter of our sidewalk. And so it's worked out really well. Um, it seems to be that's where we are now where a lot of guests wanna come up to the window. What we've done is anytime it's busy, we put up stanchions and we just make the line go right along the window. What we're proposing here would be, and that's part of the reason for this request, is that we'd like to put some cement all the way down so that we actually have a, a, a longer area that we could use 
if that were to happen. I, if we're that blessed, we, we have that type of business, sure. well, then we have a, a reason for doing that. We'll also have seating around back um, for our guests as well. Um, we are also, at the end of the building, doing a uh, pickup area, which will be the first for us, for people to buy online uh, and then be able to pick up in the shop. And so that's another entry point for them, for us to be able to kind of diffuse any of this throughout that whole area there. Um, so we believe with the two windows and that separate element, door dashers would not be coming up to the window. They would be going around the back. All third party would, anybody buys and then picks up. So we're, we would make a, even a bigger attempt than we have in Carmel, which is only one window, to diffuse that and then to make sure it stays along, along the side. Because the bottom line is for us, it doesn't, you know, I'm, I'm a code guy too, I believe that, but more importantly is people. I mean, so it doesn't help us either if we've got a bunch of people out there and people can't get by, that's gonna ruin our business too, so. Um, and just, do you mind if I just go with yeah. a couple other questions? Um, and so we're, you are, um, the larger tree that exists there is planning to stay, the smaller tree that's in not such great uh, shape yeah. is gonna come out. Um, okay. Yeah, so I did work with Haskell on that yep. and we got our permit. And they're going to remove the small one and prune that beautiful one. We don't yep. want to lose that. Exactly. And the AC unit is going to get relocated as well. It is. Yes. Okay. Perfect. And then, um, so can you just so when we were talking about this, you know, we're yeah. you know, we're all very familiar with the area. Yeah. We're um, uh, longtime uh, visitors of the downtown and all that. And um, you know, there's a lot of internal space to the Dunkirk Square building. Did you consider any walk-up windows on the internal, or was this just the preferred location? We've considered it. Uh -huh. um, the issue there is a height difference from inside to outside, okay. which is which makes it extremely challenging. Got it. Um, oh, because there are the stairs uh, between the two. And so on the inside courtyard side, I, I don't know the, the math on it. It's about two and a half, three feet. It's it's a big difference. So immediately the window would be you're you're here and there. So absolutely, yeah, we did consider that. Um, as a possible, but it's, okay. it's and then can I? Um, you talked about the idea of you know pavers and and treatment on on the grass area and such, which I think we could. Um, and so if, and we talked about this in, in a staff meeting this morning, yeah. trying to come up with ideas. You know whether it was stanchions, which you've already mentioned, or some temporary, or uh, we'd consider even like a more of an um, ornamental type fencing or something. You know we'd be willing to. Um, uh, certainly um, talk and work with you on that if the board does uh, find this to be something they want to move forward with. When you talk about um, seating in the back, um, are you speaking on like along the alley? Along the uh, back side of our shop within the square. So right, I think, do you have it on there? Yeah. Right, right here maybe? No, oh. we're going to put a bench here. Oh, on the on the, the alley. Court, 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 courtyard. Oh, yeah, no, okay. Courtyard. Courtyard. There we. Okay, I was concerned. Yeah. Okay, so because so I, I was going to say I don't think that alley is going to be a very enjoyable place to enjoy ice cream. So I was wanting to make sure we were we were talking about the same space. Yeah. So um, so if you're thinking, there's the two walk-in entrances to Dunkirk Square from the Dun. There's one from the Dun Street side that is near this walk-up window. That's the one we're talking about. If you come from the, for the parking lot behind, um, there is the entrance into the courtyard area. Um, and so the height difference he was talking about earlier is when you walk right in there, there's about, I think, two or three steps that then take you down towards the lower level. So the bench area they were talking about in there, in that area. That's where the other bench that they were talking about. I think, yep. you, um, yep. and correct us if you're wrong, are you thinking about maybe a couple cafe tables no. along done at all or no? Personally, I would love to. I think it would look great. Um, I, I really think it depends on this, and, mm -hmm. I, and I think on how we all work together and try to make it work. Okay. Uh, the bottom line is, I mean, I'm kind of open to everything. I, I want the area to look great, and I want it to yeah. be, and I want it to be workable. So, we're completely open at this point to doing whatever you know we think is going to be best. So, uh, we had an engineering team meeting uh, this morning talking about all things um, permits, and um, this we gave a lot more discussion internally with staff and came to a bit better place than where we were with it yesterday. Yesterday, we were really concerned about the queuing, and that's where the idea of stanchions and making sure the stanchions are uh, to the inside of the cl closer side of the building, Absolutely. you know, to really just try to um, de delineate the sidewalk as a, as a pass pathway for pedestrians. Um, and so I think staff at this point in time would support the request. Outdoor dining is actually happening on the private property area, is that right? Like that courtyard is 
owned by the yes. land yes. owner by, of the yes, by center, the owner. Yes. right? Correct. Um, so, Adam, does that then comply uh, with what the code needs to be as far as, I know we were talking about walk-up windows, outdoor dining, there was like a confluence of uh, details there that has everyone determined that this so, yeah, is let's, something that... Let's clarify. So um, building code and everything else, they will work through Monroe County Building Department on building code. I think what we were, what was being referred to yesterday was the Unified Development Ordinance through the Planning Department that dictates development and uh, such zoning. Um, yes, our understanding is that they did meet the requirements from planning for their seating requirements. Okay. I believe that is correct. And we yeah. can confirm that. We will certainly confirm that. And that includes paving that spot of grass there That now. is up to us. That's the public right of way. So that's where we get our full um, okay. discretion there, you know, as far as what tr we would want to go with more of a paver than just pri we will work with them closely to make sure it's a material that meets engineering and public works needs there for that. But staff is willing to, to work with them to entertain the yeah. pavers or whatever in that yeah. area. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I don't, we don't have a pre preference on that. I think it's whatever looks best or whatever. Sure. Other questions on this item? I don't have a question, but I just wanna say, I. I think this is a really nice project, and I like the idea of having the walk-up window. I'm really uncomfortable with having it in this location, particularly because of the nature of the traffic at the intersection and the fact that it's all coming one direction. So if people are on the sidewalk or having to move for somebody on the sidewalk, they're stepping into a lane of traffic that is coming up from behind them. Um, so I just... I'm not sure that I can support this. I wanted to let you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I think it looks like a really good project, but I, I just am not comfortable with it, with the traffic where it is. Sure. I'm Michael Chambly, a local architect, and we're working with Steve on the project. Mm -hmm. I, thank you. <clears throat> I wanted to show you uh, on the floor here uh -huh. about how much space would be between the building and mm -hmm. the curb. Mm -hmm. I, I think just, just for um, viewers and listeners at home who wouldn't be able to necessarily hear what was just said, um, we were looking at the amount of space that would be um, paved in that area using the council chambers as a right. reference guide um, for that. So um, it, uh, and so, general uh, board member uh, Lloyd, your your concern more is just the general traffic traveling near the sidewalk, um, less uh, and and having a window there at all. With with queuing up on yeah queuing up on the sidewalk um, in that area, um, with the width of the sidewalk as it is, and as I understand it, the 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 tree that's there is going to remain there, correct? Um, <clears throat> And uh, yeah, and and the the traffic turning into the alley as well. I just might just yeah. mention that sure. the queuing. It, do you have a copy of the plan? There, the, it's in the packet. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, from where the building bumps out here on the north side. Mm -hmm. Where it says existing. It's around page 160 mm -hmm. if you're. Yep. Okay. From there, we were uh, asking for permission to pave the right of way, which comes to the property line right here, and it's 22 feet of pavement. So we, we expect everyone to queue towards the, the south right. on the paved area, the new paved area, not the sidewalk. Okay. And some of that, some of that is within the property, it's not right. within the right of way. So, you know, I, I guess strategically, you could queue on within the property. 
You know what I mean? Right. So because there is a good amount of space there. Our, our real, I guess, hope was that by adding the, the concrete, we would just make it an easier transition rather than if we were to say to the building department, okay, we want to add our concrete to the property line, that would cue the line, then there wouldn't be the way I understand it anyway, and please correct me if I'm if I'm not correct, there then there wouldn't be a a, a, a use, a, a, an encroachment or a, or a, you know what I mean? Because we would be within the property. So, um, <clears throat> maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. Yeah, the property line runs right up to the edge of the, the building. Um, yeah, on like, the one side, but not down, right? It's, it's two feet, yeah. two feet from the building on the south side and about one foot from the building on the north side. So, um, if you go to pay, and, and I, you know, this may be one where we ask just for some more time from, for everyone, but um, to really understand. Um, so um, with the next page down where it's the actual conceptual signage elevation uh, picture. Um, so as part of this encroachment agreement, we're also going to get an encroachment agreement for the shed looking structure that I believe has some fire. It's <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, with the riser room in it, um, and and this is just a question of if if we from the corner of that south towards the alley, if a more permanent fencing structure that kept the queuing to the building would that I'm I, I understand what your concern if 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 that type of installation occurred where it kept the queuing, you know. It, uh, would that maybe be something we could explore with them and come back with some better drawings next meeting? Yeah, if we had something that was uh, more more permanent, um, that would certainly make me feel better. <laughs> yeah. Um, but do you see where I'm kind of headed with that thought? Yeah. I think, yeah, sure. I, so I, let's, let's plan. We meet every two weeks. Sure. Um, and over the next couple of weeks, we'll try to come up with a plan that um, would show some fencing that would... I, the real concern, so <clears throat> there's the stop sign at Kirkwood, but um, I, late, I don't know what, what your hours are going to be, but the- We the, don't the, either the, yet. The area mm -hmm. changes. And right now there won't be any hours until <laughs> uh, the, the area changes throughout the course of the day and throughout when students are in um, different uh, moods, let's say. Um, and so it, it just, our big concern here is with the way the Dunn Street traffic goes through Kirkwood. Um, there, you know, there's a short curb there. It's not a very built-up curb. There's not a lot to keep the traffic off the sidewalk in a really bad instance. So, if there was by chance the queuing onto the sidewalk, that's what we're really trying to avoid. So, I think we might be able to explore some concepts with some fencing that would show on the pictures and um, see if that's something we can work with, make sure planning's good with, and, and such. Can I bring up one sure. more little issue? Sure. So, the pre-order pickup window on that corner with the alley. I'm also as concerned about that corner because if you watch both pedestrians and drivers through there, they don't know to turn into the parking garage until it's just time. The Students, lot, yeah. the parking lot, people are walking across the street without looking. And so whether the line, I hope you have enough business so the line will continue around that corner or just people standing and queuing at that pre-order window, that corner, I think, has the potential to be real dangerous as well. And I don't know if there's any additional safety measure or signage. There is a, there or, is a lot. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're fine. Uh, there is a lot. There's a small pickup area right inside. So there is room for people to come in. I, my experience is, that's all I can go by, what we, had, what we have in Carmel, which is a pretty healthy business. So I look at that. If we could mirror, mirror that would be great. There, there's never more than one person on a DoorDash picking it up. We, we do about 18 orders a night. If we doubled that here and did 36, it still wouldn't be where we would have multiple people in there. The online ordering is light right now. Um, again, you're talking one every half hour. Um, the other thing about DoorDash is that there are already restaurants around there that have DoorDash and people are pulling up their cars and essentially parking in one of the lanes of traffic. So I don't know if there's a way to say DoorDash 
That's one of the things that we're actually looking at throughout that area with the outdoor dining. On Friday and Saturday nights, we're working with BPD right now because we've got it all listed as no parking with the outdoor dining set up and everything. We're still getting drivers that are continually queuing in the lane of traffic, blocking the lane of traffic. So, And that's you've got several restaurants offering several different products in the area with DoorDash, and, and that's something we're looking to address as well. I do understand your concern. <clears throat> so let me just also... so. You're thinking about the walk-up window along Dunn. Um, the back southeast corner of the building along the alley is where the DoorDash um, folks would come in. Um, yeah, we want to give, we want to kind of diffuse yeah, and give one. another and entry point to the building to, alley. Yep. so that we wouldn't park. Yeah. Well, the parking's on the south side of the right, alley. Yeah. Right. Um, are, you ta are, are there any internal pickup windows at all? Is there any ability for a customer to walk into the courtyard area, enter into the building, and do a pickup there? No. This would be the only pickup. Yeah for yeah, all it's customers just not big enough it's a, it's a small space hmm. um, it's okay. a small space um, so the front door if you will is that on the interior of the, the building there's like three door yeah i know i think the one you mean is probably the one within the courtyard right well there's yeah. two <laughs> like if people if if somebody was going there and they were ordering there not pre-ordering so they're they're ordering there at the restaurant are they coming, they can either go to the walk-up window or they can go into the interior of the building or is the walk-up window truly the only interaction for people who want to, in the moment, purchase something? Yes, that is correct. Okay. What you just I stated. thought there was also one more internal. I think we're going to need to really um, work and chew on this one a little bit more. I thought there was also going to be an internal like storefront where you walk in and place an order for... Um, ice cream where you know you stand in a lobby of a restaurant of an ice cream shop they scoop uh, but this would be your only yeah there's not there's just not enough room okay um, so people are queuing to order and also standing around waiting for their orders once they've already ordered it, we would we we have two ways of doing it with two windows we can either order and serve at the same window handles is pretty pretty or we can order there and pick up at the next, which tends to be a little bit quicker. We're only about 30 seconds on an order because we don't have an extens extensive menu. Great. So we're not like a, uh, I'm not trying to pit against a competition, but we're not like a typical ice cream shop where we have all this stuff going on. We're Italian ice and soft custard, so it's a lot quicker. It's literally, yeah. So it's the scooping, it's not the we don't mixing. Scoop. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> we scoop the ice, we don't scoop the ice cream. Oh. Right, so, but the it comes out of a, you know, soft serve, yeah. Anyway. Um, okay. It's just a different, yeah. If we could, I'd ask you to table the item for the evening. Um, we'll make sure staff, um, I'd like to meet you on site. I'd like for us to meet you on site. I appreciate yeah. everybody trying to, and I get that feeling that everybody's yep. trying to work yep. this for the safety of everybody. So I, I, I have to thank you and, and I appreciate that. Yep. So. No, and we want to also recognize it's another small business that's trying to open yep. in our downtown. We want to facilitate With these things. With three kids that are going to IU and well. trying to. <laughs> <laughs> well. Um, they, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we are all familiar there, too. Yeah, they're actually running the business, so. Uh, um, so, yeah, we will, oh, like I said, we meet every two weeks. Uh, hopefully this wouldn't make much delay of the project. We want to make sure, and we want to make sure we get this right and keep everybody safe. Um, and so, yeah, we'll make sure over the next, uh, next few, are, well, we'll work on the details of meeting you okay. on site, um, but we'll ask that they t able, table the item for this evening and then uh, take it up again at the next meeting. Thank you for that. And thanks for all the additional information and the documentation here, because that really helps us. Um, you know, I like the idea of that, uh, you know, walk-up kind of interaction. And so if we can figure out how to make it possible and safe, um, that will be our next uh, next steps. I so appreciate, appreciate that. that. Yeah, Thank you. thanks. Yeah. All right, so uh, do we have any public comment on this item um, before we call for motion? Okay, seeing none. Is there a um, motion on this item? I move that we table the right-of-way encroachment request from Rita's Italian Ice for a walk-up window. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Lloyd? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion to table passes. Uh, next up is staff reports and other business. It's been a little fragmented of a meeting. I'm going to skip staff reports tonight, and we will um, uh, pick back up next week. I'll give, an, um, I'll give an update at our next meeting, which will be before the conversation with City Council about sanitation rates. So I'll get you a nice update on that at the next meeting. Great. Thank you. Uh, next up is approval of claims. 
Are there any questions on the claims? Any public comment on claims? Seeing none, is there a motion? I move that we approve claims tonight in the amount of $733,076.05. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Lloyd? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. And if we have nothing else this evening, I will call for adjournment. <laughs>